How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'll be counting down my top 10 favorite TV shows of all time. Now I'm gonna say this to get this out of the way, I'm not much of a TV viewer. It'll take me a while to get into a show just because of the huge commitment to watch a huge show and I'll watch it if it's heavily recommended, heavily regarded, or something I've been genuinely curious about from the get-go. So obviously these are shows that I've seen that have become my favorite and most of these I actually have the full series. So without further ado, let's get to the list. So my number 10 spot is going to be a super controversial one and I don't care what anybody says. So if you have a problem with it, click off this video right now. My number 10 spot is going to be Friends. I'm a fucking defender of the show and I don't understand the hate that the show gets. The show came out in the late 90s through to the early 2000s and yeah, I'm in the minority of the people that didn't grow up with this show that actually loves it. It seems like the only people that do are the people that grew up in the 90s and grew up with friends. I just find the show hilarious. The relationship between all six main characters is touching and believable. I find Joey and Chandler to be one of the funniest duos ever. I'm not a huge fan of sitcoms, but this will always be a comfort show for me. If I'm ever flipping through channels and I see Friends is on, more times than not, I'll throw that on. This is a show where I'll defend until I'm in the grave. Hey, 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 man. Hey. Oh, how was your first day working at the restaurant? Damn! <laughs> Number nine pick for me is going to be Bates Motel. I may be a tad bit biased with this show because this show was actually filmed where I lived and the actual Bates Motel in the house was literally right around the corner from my house. Aside from that though, I actually love this show a lot. Before I even found out that they lived the show where I am, I saw ads for the show on A&E and thought, hmm, this looks interesting. I was familiar with Psycho and I like Freddie Highmore and his portrayal as young Norman Bates is perfect. You watch within the five seasons, this young teenager slowly become messed up and start becoming the psychopath we know him from the original Psycho. Vera Farmiga is amazing as always as Norman's mother. Even all the side characters we get introduced to are amazing and you watch them as this crazy situation unfolds within this small family. I also love the setting and the feel of the show. It takes place in Oregon and there's a lot of trees and forests and a lot of the show is mostly cloudy and gray so it really fits the tone. So if you're a fan of psycho or a fan of thrillers and psychological horror in general, don't let this slip under your radar. I know. I know too, mother. I know too because I remember everything about that night. I've gone over and over it a thousand times in my head. I didn't black out. I didn't do anything wrong. I did not. No. Don't touch me! Go away! Please get out of here! Number eight is going to be Supernatural. Now I'm going to be honest with you and say I still haven't completed this show yet. I got her around season nine when that was all Netflix had. Then I started dating this girl so we started the show all over again and then Netflix decided to take it off while we are still halfway through the show so that was annoying so I still need to catch up but I can confidently say that even without finishing the show this has been one of my favorites. This is also another show that's been filmed around my area as well. Supernatural follows these two brothers, Sam and Dean Winchester, and these two team up to defeat ghosts, demons, monsters, werewolves, vampires, shapeshifters, etc. These two brothers are a great duo, and further down the show you meet Castiel, who is this angel that's been sent down to help them, and he's probably the fan favorite. The show bounces back and forth between the overall story throughout the show revolving around the family and things that happen along the journey, and also there's these one-off monster of the day episodes where the brothers have to help someone. It's really the best CW show out there, and I know that with CW, some of the CGI in here can look like PS2 graphics, but even with that, I still think it's a great show and definitely worth a watch. Oh, what the hell was that? An Enochian sigil. It'll hide you from every angel in creation, including Lucifer. Would you just brand us with it? No, I carved it into your ribs. Number seven for me is going to be Stranger Things. Stranger Things is a show I never expected to blow up the way it did. I mean, for great reason, it's an amazing show and now it seems like it's odd if you've never seen Stranger Things before. I was born in the late 90s and grew up in the early 2000s, but even with never being grown up in the 80s, this show somehow makes me nostalgic and makes me want to go back in time. 
I love the music selection, the clothes, the styles, the neons, everything about this show is spot on. This show is the one responsible for bringing the 80s craze back and that's all thanks to the Duffer Brothers. Part of what makes this show special is the friendship between the five kids as you watch them grow up and stick together, as well as the older teens. The creature design in the show is amazing. All the creatures and monsters in the show look great and apply greatly to the creepy, dark horror setting for the show. I absolutely love season 1. Season 2 was good but definitely my least favorite, but season 3 was badass and made me think how could they get any better? And they answered my question with season 4. This show has amazing characters, amazing production, kick-ass soundtrack, and many ways to make you emotional and keep you on the edge of your seat, so please check out Stranger Things if you haven't. Jesus, what the f- Number 6 for me is The Simpsons. The Simpsons were a huge part in my childhood. Everyone on this planet has seen at least one episode or can name one character from The Simpsons. Growing up my parents were pretty strict on what I watched and what I listened to but The Simpsons were okay. It wasn't entirely for kids but it wasn't as bad as Family Guy or South Park. So I was in elementary school when I started watching this show, maybe in the 4th grade and I would always watch an episode of the show every night before bed. Homer Simpson was an absolute favorite of mine growing up and he always made me bust up laughing every time. This show has so many great characters that if I were to list them off now, this video would be over an hour long. The soundtrack and the score to this show are fantastic and the overall mood this show brings is like a warm blanket to me. Everything about this show just makes me so happy. I know the show has to end at some point, but when they make a full series collection of it on Blu-ray, I can imagine the price for that thing, but you know I'm going to pre-order it. What do you think, Mark? All I need is a title. I was thinking along the lines of no TV and no beer make Homer something something. Go crazy? Don't mind if I do! Breaking through to the top five is Dexter. Dexter is about this guy, Dexter Morgan who works for the Miami Police Department as a blood splatter analysis and he has a hobby of killing murderers and rapists. You watch Dexter and you can see that he believes what he's doing is good but you know it's not. I love that each season of Dexter has a main antagonist that he has to face and by far season 4 with John Lithgow as the Trinity Killer is one of the best seasons of television. His performance just knocks it out of the park. Jennifer Carpenter as Dexter's sister, Deb, is one of my absolute favorites of the show, as well as the other side characters like Angel and Masuka. Now I know it's not a perfect show, most people say the show die bombs after season 4, but I do think that season 5 and 6 have their standout moments, even some of 7, but let's not talk about season 8. That season can fuck off. When they announced a spin-off with Dexter New Blood, I was so excited for that and I actually found great enjoyment in that season. Sure it wasn't the best ending we could have gotten, but it was miles better than season 8. Aside from that, I think the show and even the character of Dexter himself, played by Michael C. Hall, is one of the best main characters in a show and I implore you to check it out if you haven't. Well, in that case, Sergeant, let me put this in the open for you. No matter what you try, no matter when, no matter how hard you work, I'll always be a step ahead of you for one simple reason. And what's that? I own you. Number 4. Sons of Anarchy. This show is fucking wild. Now admittedly, I was super late to this show. I actually binged it last year. I had a friend who kept harassing me to watch it, so I finally did. And admittedly, it starts off a tad bit slow a few episodes in, but after the first major death, you know if you know, I was strapped in. This show is intense, realistic, I totally buy these guys being in a biker gang. I think Charlie Hunnam, as the main character Jax, is up there in my top favorite TV show characters. His acting in this is amazing, when he gets pissed off in the show, it looks like you actually pissed off the wrong guy. 
Same with the other characters in the show. Ron Perlman as Clay is great. Katie Seagal as Gemma. I could list everyone, but again, that would take a while. I just love the family dynamic within the show. You can tell everyone loves each other, and you can feel when there's tension. The overall story throughout the series is captivating, and if at a point you think, it can't get any crazier than this, just wait, it will. My only complaint is that season 3, the season where they go to Ireland, kinda drags, but it's still not a terrible season. Once people start dropping like flies, that's when shit starts hitting the fan and flies all over the room. So if you haven't gotten on that train yet, better late than never. So you like Carly's, huh? Yeah, they look good, but I'm way into the slant bikes for their speed, you know? Right, right. All right. Say cheese. Cheese. Nice. That's before. Before? You don't ever sit on another man's bike, you asshole. Holy shit. Shut up, bitch! Little respect for the fair sex. That's after. Number three is going to be an obvious one, and that's Game of Thrones. Arguably the biggest show on this planet when it aired. Everybody and their mom was watching this show, and for good reason. The story and the characters and the world created by George R.R. R. Martin was a one-of-a-kind, and the man is a genius. Like I said, the characters in this show are the best written characters you'll ever see, and a great multi-layered story, and that's all I really like about the show. That's it and nothing else. But with all seriousness, the visuals... Oh god, the visuals. This shit shouldn't look good for a TV show. The dragons look flawless, the undead look cool, and every single piece of location is breathtaking. Despite what you've heard about Season 8, which I can get behind for the most part, I would not let that sway you away from Game of Thrones. The whole show is over now, so you can binge it, and we are getting some spin-off shows in the future, and I cannot wait for those. I know you've probably seen Game of Thrones before, so I don't know why I'm explaining this show to you, but if you're one of the few people that have not catched Game of Thrones yet, please get on that, please. Do you admit you poisoned the king? No. Of that I'm innocent. I'm guilty of a far more monstrous crime. I'm guilty of being a dwarf. You are not on trial for being a dwarf. Oh, yes I am. I've been on trial for that my entire life. Number two is going to be The Office. Not the UK version, the US version. This show never fails to make me laugh my ass off no matter how many times I watch it. Most of the characters are super memorable and lovable. Absolutely love the documentary style this show has with its hand cam, cutaways, and people just staring into the camera like Jim. Jim and Pam's relationship throughout the show is one thing I love about The Office, and people complain about Pam, but I tend to forgive her decisions because it makes her feel human. Also, Jim's relationship with Dwight is another highlight. Just the way he gets fucked around with and not taken seriously and trying to be a kiss-ass is hilarious. And we can't talk about The Office without talking about Michael Scott. This man just creates a mess with everything he does. He definitely has some cringy moments, but that's what makes his character amazing. He's a mess, but he genuinely cares about every single one of his co-workers, excluding Toby. Every time I get to the last episode of The Office, I always get this sad, sentimental feeling because of my attachment to the characters and always have the urge to start all the way back to the first episode. So if you've tried to get into The Office but couldn't get through Season 1, I'm telling you right now that you've almost struck gold. You only have six episodes to sit through, and then after that, it's miles better from here on out. Means go up to the right, bear right, over the bridge, and hook up with 307. Make a right Maybe turn. it's a shortcut, Dwight. It said go to the right. It can't mean that. There's well, a lake there. I think it knows where it is going. This is the, the lake. machine knows. This is the lake. Stop yelling at me. No, it's Stop not yelling. yelling. There's no boat here. Remain calm. I have trained for this. OK. Exit the window. Here we go. Make a U-turn, if possible. Look out for and now, number one, the cream of the crop. Probably another obvious one, but can you really blame me? It's Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad is, without a doubt, one of the most captivating shows I've ever seen and one of the smartest shows ever. If you're ever watching Breaking Bad and think it's going to go a certain way, this show does it better than what you thought. If you're one of the few people that have never seen this show before, 
Well, Breaking Bad is about Walter White, a chemistry teacher who discovers he has lung cancer. So with the intention that he's gonna die, he starts making a shit ton of money to provide with his family, and how, you may ask? By cooking crystal meth. And you watch Walt and his fellow student, Jesse Pinkman, as he starts becoming the kingpin and work his way up to the top of the pyramid. The dynamic on-screen duo between Walter and Jesse is a one-of-a-kind. Just seeing these two on screen together is like lightning in a bottle. Their dialogue back and forth feels real and genuine and both actors give flawless performances. In fact, all performances across the board are flawless. There's not a single actor that feels wonky or out of place. I could go on and on about this show, so do yourself a favor and watch Breaking Bad if you haven't. Even if you already have, give it another go. I've seen this show about five times and just talking about it makes me want to watch it again. There's a reason why it's hailed as one of the best shows of all time. I am not turning down the money. I am turning down you. You get it? I want nothing to do with you. Ever since I met you, everything I have ever cared about is gone, ruined, turned to shit, dead ever since I hooked up with the great Heisenberg. I have never been more alone. I have nothing! That does it for my list for my top 10 favorite TV shows of all time. What did you guys think of my list? Let me know your top 10 or top 5 in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.